Shavuot Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Rosh Hashanah, we are up to Perik Dalid Mishnah Vav, today's Mishnah should be Le'elu Nishmad, Neria Ben Svetlana, Aran Baev, and Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen, and Le'abdi Ben Chaim Lechaim, and the Refua Shilema of Bacha Bat Esther, and Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Betor Shachur Yisrael. Each of the three special Rosh Hashanah passages, which is kingship, remembrances, and shofars, must contain a minimum number of psukim from the Torah, verses from the Torah. The Mishnah begins, En pohatin me'asera malchiyot, me'asera zichonot, me'asera shafarot. We may have no fewer than 10 verses of kingship, 10 verses of remembrances, and 10 verses of shofars. Each passage should contain at least 10 verses that include at least 3 from the Torah, the 5 books of Moshe, 3 from Ketuvim writings, and 3 from Nevim, the prophets. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri Omer, Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri says, Im amar shalosh, shalosh mikulan yatsa. Even if he recited only three verses in each passage, one verse from the Torah, one from the Nevi'im, and one from the Ketuvim, he has fulfilled his obligation. However, it is preferable to recite all ten verses, as the Rambam writes in Erchot Shofar, chapter 3, Halacha 8. And the Rav does tell us, Velachak Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, the Halacha does follow the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan, Ben Nuri. The Mishnah continues, En maskirin zikaron malchut v'shofar shel puranut. We do not cite any verse about remembrance, kingship, or shofar that speaks of punishment of Israel. It is not appropriate to mention God's anger toward the Jewish people on Rosh Hashanah, as the Gemara explains on page 32b, Mesechet Rosh Hashanah. Now the Mishnah here changes the order of the subjects, mentioning remembrance before kingship, to teach that even if one recited the passages in this order, he has fulfilled his obligation. The Mishnah discusses a sequence of three verses, of these verses. Matchil ba Torah u mashlim ba Navi. One begins with three verses from the Torah, then says three from Ketuvim, and ends with four from the Nevi'im. Now, our custom is to recite the verses from Ketuvim before the verses from Nevi'im, as the Gemara says on page 32a, even though Ketuvim follows Nevi'im in the order of the scripture. The reason for this practice is that the major books of Ketuvim, Tehilim, Kohelet, and Iov, were written by David, David Amelech, Shlomo Amelech, and others, before the works of the prophets of Yeshaya, Yermiao, Yecheskel, and others. And in fact, the verses from Ketuvim included in the three passages are entirely from Tirim. So since David Amelech came before these prophets, the custom is to, to read the verses from Ketuvim before the verses from the Nevi'im. Rabbi Yossi, Omer, Rabbi Yossi says, Im yatsa. Even if one ended with the verse from the Torah, he has fulfilled his obligation. The Gemara page 32 b concludes that Rabbi Yossi's statement was recorded incorrectly and should be changed to read, one ends with the verse in the Torah, but if he has ended with the verses of the Nevi'im, he has to fulfill his obligation. Not that if one ended with the verse in the Torah, but the other is would say the Chovah. Rather, one ends, one should end with the verse in the Torah, but if he ended with verses of Nevi'im, he has to fulfill his obligation. According to Rabbi Yossi, the tenth verse of each passage should prefer, preferably be from the Torah. However, if one followed the opinion of the previous Tan and concluded with the fourth verse from Nevi'im, he has fulfilled his obligation. And the Rav does tell us, V'alecha Rabbi Yossi, the Alecha follows the opinion of Rabbi Yossi. And that is then a Mishnah Vav. We continue with Mishnah Zayin. We have learned that the mitzvah blowing the Shavar is performed during the Musaf service. The mitzvah of saying Halel, however, is performed at a different time. Ha'over lefnei teva biyom tov shel Rosh Hashanah. This is the law of one who passes before the Ark to lead the prayer service on the Yom Tov of Rosh Hashanah. Hashini Matkia, the second one who leads the Musaf service, causes the Shofar to be blown. Now it is customary that the person who leads the Musaf service is not the one who leads the Shacharit service. This is what the Ran explains it. The Shofar is blown during the service led by the second one by Musaf. Now the original practice was to blow the Shofar and recite the blessings of kingship, remembrances and Shofars during the earlier service Shacharit because of the principle of Zerizim Akdim Mitzvot, the eager ones perform Mitzvot early. The custom of blowing the Shavah during Musaf began in a time of religious persecution when blowing the Shavah was banned. Government agents spied on Jewish congregations throughout the morning when the Shachrit service was held to see whether they violated the edict. Once the morning passed and the spies left, 
the congregants were able to blow the Shavuot during Musaf. That became the established custom, which remained in place even after the period of persecution ended, as the Rav explains. Now the Mishnah's term, Matkia, causes to blow, implies that the leader himself does not blow the Shofar, rather it is blown by someone else. If the same person would lead the prayers and blow the Shofar, he might not concentrate properly on both. So the Mishnah says, Matkia, Asheni Matkia, the second one who leads the Shofar, causes the Shofar to be blown, meaning someone else blows it. But on an occasion when Halel is said, most festivals other than Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, Halel is not reset in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, on these days when God is sitting in judgment and the books of life and death are open before Him, it is inappropriate to sing the joyous song of Halel, as the Gemara says on page 32b. The Mishnah says in this case, the first one who leads the Shacharit service leads the reading of Halel. Now Halel is recited during Shacharit in light of the rule that we said, Zerizim Maktimim Limitzvot. So again, just to recap on this Mishnah, because we read a lot of notes, this is the law of the one who passes before the Ark to lead the prayer service on the Yom Tov of Rosh Hashanah. The second one who leads the Musaf has someone else blow the Shofar at that time. But when Halel is recited on all the other holidays except Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, the first one who led the Shachrit service, he's the one that leads the reading of Halel. And that is Anabu Taif, today's Mishnah Yomi. Everybody should have Yishavu Tov. Bauch Adonai Leolam. Amen v'amen.